Painting and weathering modern subjects can often require a different mindset to the vehicles of yesteryear. The shapes and colours are different, and the way they are cared for and maintained is radically different also. In today's video, I'll take the model from the clean lines presented previously to a dusty and weathered modern marvel. G'day guys, I'm Clayton and this is Workbench Hobbies. After all of the initial effort of the masking and spraying, I found myself a little paralysed with indecision as to how to weather this model. The best way I'd found to get past that is to break it down and just focus on the next step, and after that the next step should present itself and so on. Having a plan is optimal, but sometimes you just have to let the model evolve by itself. My first step was to apply a layer of dry brushing over the car key drab sections in the scheme. The colour was sucking the life out of the detail, so by applying a dry brushed layer of highlights for French tankers of all things over the colour, I'm able to bring the raised details to life. When dry brushing, it's important to remove as much paint off the brush as possible before you start application. The brush should be moved gently over the details until you start to see the effect presenting. If you find it's not enough paint is going down and transferring, try a little more pressure. The effect the dry brushing is giving can be clearly seen on the hatches and around the rear deck of the turret. The effect is also lightly applied over the drab sections on the barrel. Making these videos has been a real reminder to me as to the back and forth nature of the way I paint my models, so forgive me if this paint job doesn't travel in a linear direction. Washes are one of those techniques that I find myself often doubling back to to help balance out previous weathering effects. After the dry brushing, the khaki drab was looking a little flat to me, so another round of washes was required. Starship Filth oil paint was thinned down using a white spirit and applied as a wash around the drab sections on the model. The thin mix can also be used as a type of filter to create varying shades in the colour. It will be subtle but will add a little extra depth. Again, the hatches in the turret perfectly display the result of the dry brushing from before and the oil wash I am applying now. Oils tend to dry a lot softer than enamel washes do and can give a little more flexibility, so they seem the perfect solution for this application. After looking at the model and the results I was getting, I wasn't happy with how messy the washes were looking. It was a combination of the washers being messy due to the anti-slip sections and the mouldings in the plastic on the tank, as well as the way they were working with the white, sand and the khaki drab. It was really important to keep this paint job as sharp and defined as I could, but I also needed to keep depth and highlights in the colours. So it was time to go back to the airbrush. A lightened mix of the sand was then carefully applied to tidy up some of the offending areas. As long as the paint is well thinned, the airbrush is clean and my air pressure is kept around 15 psi, I am able to accurately spray in these sections with only the need for a basic masking job. I'm trying to avoid the details with the washes around them and focus on the flat sections and the middles of the panels. This was a great opportunity also to add even additional highlights as well as clean up some of the messy washes. The white was probably the main offender as the washes had discoloured it in parts, so the process is repeated using the white. And rather than muck around masking, I'm able to use a small steel rule to avoid overspray and keep my edges tight. Then to finish this round of spraying, a lightened mix of the khaki drab using deck tan is applied. 
The khaki drab sections really came to life at this point and the previous layers of weathering really started to unite and make sense. I dry brushed the khaki drab earlier, but the sand now needed a lift of its own. So a touch of buff is used to elevate the look of some of the raised detail around the sand sections. This is a stylized technique and won't be to everyone's taste, but it is essentially doing a similar thing to the dry brushing, but in a more controlled way. The effect will be softened during subsequent layers, so I am being as bold as my inner voice will allow me. Effects such as chipping are a great way to add interest to your model, but being a modern tank means that that probably isn't appropriate. The rubber flaps, however, offer an opportunity to add that effect. The sections were first painted in a black grey colour and left to dry. The details around that rear wall were also painted at this time. A quick tape mask is applied and two coats of chipping fluid are sprayed through the airbrush. The first layer takes a couple of minutes to dry and once dry, the second layer is then applied. Almost immediately, the flaps are painted in the sand colour, both on the outside as well as the inside faces. I've thinned the paint with isopropyl alcohol as this will be a little easier to chip than if I'd used a lacquer thinner to thin the paint, although given I'm starting the chipping immediately after the paint application, either would have been fine. A brush moistened with water is then used to wet the surface and start scrubbing away to remove the layer of sand. The chipping fluid is activated by the water and it allows me to chip away the top layer of paint, presenting a highly realistic looking worn rubber mud flap. Working on the rear, I'd realized I'd neglected the rear lights. They are supplied as two small clear pieces. The back of the part is first sprayed in a stainless steel colour and left to dry. The shapes on the front of the light section are then filled in using a masking liquid. The latex liquid is wet enough to apply with a brush and viscous enough that I'm able to carefully move it around with the brush and mask in the shapes of the light. The parts are then painted in the drab colour and attached to the tank using super glue so as not to taint the paint. The latex masks are then carefully removed and the colour sections of the lights are decorated using a touch of clear red and clear orange. The 50 cal from the remote weapon station is polished up using a silicon brush and a gun metal pigment powder. That technique is also used sparingly on some of the cables and tools around the engine deck. A fine lead pencil is also a handy tool to add metallic scuffs and scratches and is accessible to just about everyone. A hyperchrome pen from SMS is a quick and simple way to fill in the chrome recesses in the headlight assemblies. I still felt the model was looking a little toy-like for my liking. A great way to integrate and blend the paint is by using an oil dot rendering technique. Small dots of dust, light flesh, industrial earth and shadow brown are applied around the surfaces of the model. I'm focusing the lighter colours toward the top and particularly on the white and sand colours and the darker colours toward the bottoms of the panels with the focus being more on the khaki drab. A flat brush moistened with white spirit is then used to blend the paint in an up and down motion. I'm not trying to remove it, I'm trying to create a filter over the colours underneath and by doing this I'm creating subtle streaking and tones in the finish. This is a great way to make the paintwork look tired and weathered without needing to go over the top with weathering effects. That's not to say you can't do that, but setting this distressed layer as my foundation will give me the perfect starting point to build up my weathering effects. 
The same dot rendering is used around the turret section, with the bulk of this technique focused around the vertical surfaces. I do use this in selected horizontal locations, but only sparingly. Once the layer has had a few hours to dry off, I'm able to further refine the effect by using a makeup sponge to smooth and blend the layered oil paints. I'm able to do this because the oil paints are still quite soft and easy to manipulate. And again, back to the washes. The filtering process had again softened some of the contrasts in my paintwork. So a wash using shadow brown thinned down considerably with white spirit was used to help boost some of those details. I'm also able to add some shading in recessed areas using this thinned oil wash. Once the oils had had around 24 hours to dry off, the model was sealed in a coat of satin varnish to seal it all in place. I then went back to the chipping fluid and gave the model two coats of the product in preparation for the dust layer that was about to follow. Choosing a dust colour on a scheme like this can be a little tricky because you don't want it to blend into the colours that are already on the tank. It needs to be noticeable but in a subtle and realistic way. Deck tan seemed to tick the boxes and the light layer was misted around the lower edges of the model and the rear with the greatest focus towards the rear of the tank. A flat brush is then moistened with tap water and used to create some crusty chipped patterns in this layer of dust. This effect helps simulate older layers of dust and sets the foundation for the weathering effects that will follow. The dusting around the tracks was also chipped to try and create some textures and tones in those elements. I'll address the rubber pads on the tracks at a later stage, but for now, the color of the tracks and the layer of the dusting was working really nicely to help tie the look of the model together. The chipping process can be hard to get a read on as you were doing it due to the water over the surface of the model. I'm regularly removing the water by carefully dabbing a tissue over the surface. This will give me a clearer look at how the effect is tracking. A paste using airfield dust and rainmark effects, which is an enamel paint from AK, is mixed together in a small tub. The pigment and the enamel paint is a perfect mix as the enamel paint will act as a carrier for the pigment. It also will help bind the pigment to the surface of the model. The two different colors will work and mix together and give me something unique that should sit nicely over this urban camouflage. The paste is splattered along the underside and lower edges of the model and this effect is achieved in a couple of ways. Firstly, a brush loaded with the paste has bursts of air from my airbrush blown across it and that can be a little tricky to control so it's always a good idea to test it before committing it to the model. The second way the paste can be applied is by flicking the brush with a toothpick. The splashes are easier to control using this method, but can sometimes look a little structured. But the two techniques work together well, and it's all about getting a feel for the application and having a clear picture in your mind of what you'd like your model to look like. Different brushes can give you different splash patterns, so I'd encourage you to try different sizes and shapes and just have a bit of fun with this technique. The lightest tone of the dusting layer has quite a significant coverage because the lighter layers of dust tend to simulate older and drier deposits. I'm then able to go back through with dark earth deposits and then later with an even darker brown to apply the splatters in a little bit of a more refined way. The darker tones will tend to represent newer deposits or perhaps even damp soil. The dark and the light layers work together to help tell the story of the tank and give us a hint as to the terrain it may have seen. 
Because the splattering can be a little tricky to control, it's inevitable that some cleanup will be required. And this is just a matter of using a touch of white spirit to remove any dots of the paint that are maybe overscale or somewhere where you didn't want them to be. Care must be taken so as not to remove the parts you want to keep though. So just remember, you can always go back and add more splashes if you're unhappy with the finish. I'm able to further stretch this effect by using glossy finish oil paints such as bitumen and grease effects. The application is very restrained and kept to the lowest edges and around panel lines. The dark glossy oils will simulate wet splashes of mud and further enhance the weathering in these areas. I can also use a sponge at this stage to create textures in those dark oils and it's just another layer to the finish and an indescript stain on the model. The rubber pads on the tracks are brush painted in a black grey colour. The masks are removed from the clear parts and a couple of aerials are added using stretch sprue and the model was complete. Taking a leap into the realm of modern armour has been a nice change of scenery for me and as mentioned back in the first video in this series, I love the idea of reproducing a scheme that is different to the norm and offers a challenge to execute. Don't get me wrong, I love freehand in camouflage schemes, but to paint a lineal geometric scheme such as this takes a completely different thought process and a heck of a lot of planning. I think the Berlin Brigade Chieftain I built and created a mask set for a number of years ago really ignited my love for this style of scheme. So it was nice to revisit a similar look with a different color palette and obviously a very different tank. I made this build hard for myself by trying to build a model that had been half painted, but I knew that was a challenge I'd have to deal with in order to paint this scheme. Working with a white as my lightest color up to the darkest colour being khaki drab also presented its own challenges due to the expanded colour palette. But again it was a nice change of pace and an opportunity to work with something unique. I've really loved building this Leopard 2 and for the most part I'm happy with how it came out. This tank was part of a group build with a few mates so I'm hoping to preview all of the Leopards that made the table for you in the next few weeks. If I've added some value today, please tap the like button and be sure to subscribe. And I'd love to hear your thoughts about one, the Leopard 2, and two, this style of scheme in the comments below. So please feel free to join in the conversation. Remember guys, this is the greatest hobby in the world. Share it with your family, share it with your friends. Be sure to connect with your community. It's so important and let's be proud of what we do. Until next time, I'll see you soon. Got you, you little bastard.